Tell me about uh, the first time that you came to Austin. Like, what was your impression of this town? Uh, first time I came here was probably like maybe like 1992 or three, and I thought it was great. I thought it was way better than Houston. I knew right away that I wanted to move here after high school. I just really liked it. It really uh, it worked for me. All the parts about Houston that scared me were gone. And it was like much nicer, and uh, everything is a little bit closer together too. I really it it worked for me almost immediately. How old were you? Probably like fifteen. I think I had come when I was a kid before, but that was you know, I went with friends and did you know went and saw shows at that time. That's what I consider like my first trip to Austin. Was it a notable show? Uh, no, it was just some like psychobilly show at Emos. Nothing. I didn't come for a show the first time I came. I just came to spend like my spring break or something, maybe like my sophomore year of high school. And uh, no, it wasn't like it wasn't like a Houston thing where you like go there to see a show. That's mm -hmm. what I grew up doing, going to Houston to see shows or go for the day for the record stores. Uh, but I, I just came here and hung out. I can't remember all the stuff I did. Just went to Waterloo and Tower. And, Ate at Kirby Lane. All stuff that sounds pretty hokey now. <laughs> so when did you uh, decide to move here and, and why? I uh, probably decided on that first visit and then I just executed it once I was done with uh, high school. I'm just, to, I moved with a band, so we moved here to just do that, I guess. And then uh, what's kept you here all this time? I like it. I've been to some other cities. I've spent... Um, like months never like too long but i've spent chunks of time in other cities and uh you know austin's got its faults but it's it's it works for me there's an appreciation of music and creativity but then also of just like the kind of lazy there's a laziness that i enjoy about austin i don't really like having to put on airs as much at all if if possible and you can't really get that in New York or LA or San Francisco because you really have to hustle just to get by so you have to kind of become a hustler to do so mm -hmm. and still to this day you don't really have to hustle unless you want to live posh in Austin yeah it's the lack of pretension that is one of the things I really like about living here too mm -hmm. well so um like what are some of the you know highlights of you know your your time here in terms of like music shows you know austin personalities everything know, just the changes um i think when i was in um high school i was listening to a lot of different things and i, I sort of prided myself on being able to to have conversations with the uh, older people at waterloo records and hold my own like i you know pre-internet it was a lot of work too i put in a lot of work but the the music that was popular from the underground was still very heavy. It was sort of what it evolved out of the hardcore scene that the older kids were listening to. Um, it had really caught on, like the the heavy guitar stuff and the um, introverted, a little bit more like intellectual rock was sort of king. But then there was all this other stuff happening, and so uh, I liked how like by the time I got to Austin that was so you're like you were sort of out of date if you had a flannel shirt and distorted guitar people were just trying to like spoon and just started to play shows right when i moved here spoon started playing shows as a band and uh i just you know i dug anything that was trying to do something a little different and all you know as soon as i moved here all country also really picked up some steam because <clears throat> there were some seminal releases at that time the first uh sun Volt album first couple of Wilco albums especially that second Wilco album just took off and caught the imagination of um, 20 somethings at that time and so the shows at that time were more intimate they were like at Liberty Lunch um, and Electric Lounge places like that hole in the wall so if there was something cool there weren't a ton of people there but it, it would be packed but you would see the same people at every show so there was definitely an idea of a community and playing out was cool, too. You didn't really make much money as in um, a band doing originals in the indie rock genre. 
but there were places to play. And yeah, mostly my mem- my best memories would just be the shows and the transitions of music. Like you know, being here in the alt country thing took off, but it was two or three years later, and the electronic stuff really started to get a foothold, and uh, that completely just absorbed me too. That you know that whole switch over to um, going to see DJs and listening to electronic music and opening up to that. So, yeah, it seems to keep, it happens like every three or four years, and I really enjoy that. Austin tends to embrace new styles. Um, I don't think it was always that way. The complaints I hear from the old timers here is that, you know, it it was a bit of a struggle to get play for anything outside the norm. It's like they just let in a little bit of what the hippies were doing, some country blues rock, and they kind of never wanted to get past that. You had to fight for every inch. Mm Like, when I first moved here, you could not give hip-hop away. There were no... If they had a hip-hop show, it was on the east side, specifically marketed to uh, the blacks of Austin, not even bothering to market it to college students. Why would you not market it to uh, kids in college? Like, that would be so interesting to them. But that slowly started to pick up steam. Once the electronic stuff got a foothold, the underground hip-hop was like... The door was open. It just, like, came in, too. And it was night and day. You go from, like, 95, you probably couldn't pack like half of the front room of hole in the wall for a hip-hop show and by like 98 99 they were lined up around the block to see like black alicious and and jurassic five on those first tours they did you know i mean it was queued up around the block and they didn't even have full-length albums out yet it was just a a big change and yeah so that's my favorite stuff interesting so um like what would be like your absolute absolute favorite shows that you've seen i like the uh, here. the south by southwest stuff uh just because they put bands together that don't normally belong together so i love shit like that so anything where you're mashing artists together not in a festival way where i have to spend three days to see them all but like in a, a small pocket so probably my favorite or one of my favorites was when the lineup was uh, it was Mr. Liff, um, then Black Alicious, and then Spoon, and then Echo and the Bunnymen, and then that was all in like three and a half hours, and it was free, and it was at Auditorium Shores, and it was lovely outside, and the crowd was really nice. Maybe it was six oh seven, maybe even oh eight. They kind of blend together. There was another time that I feel like was maybe more special at the free show where I was with a big group of friends and we saw explosions in the sky and i think all of austin had like a shared emotional experience that night they shot off fireworks at the end of the show and it was just beautiful but i i think i just being a music uh, fan i think i appreciate more the bizarre mashup of artists of seeing like mr liff and echo and the Bunnymen with spoon and black delicious in between it just blew my mind i thought about it all the time like how unique that was that's cool well, what about like lo- like Austin specific uh, experiences, like personalities, like Austin uh, personalities that are sort of larger than life, or um, mm. Austin uh, not just people but places, you know, Barton well, Springs, things like that. The stuff that Austin likes to claim, uh, it it all has some importance to me. You know, I I really love the history of music. I've uh, you know, I was a fan of. Um, you know, Texas psychedelia and, and Texas kind of blues rock was an obsession of mine long before I moved to Austin. So uh, I would say just to like run off a list of things that Austin, I don't know how much you could say Austin possesses these things, but we like to claim things like so 13th floor elevators. Uh, for me, Spoon, it's like I moved to this town and then my what would become my favorite band for like 10 years just appeared. And it, you know, when you're young, you're like, oh, wow, this has just happened for me. Like, this is my reality now. So I would see them all the time. And um, so, yeah, so the elevators, Spoon, Daniel Johnston, like, you're almost guaranteed to get turned on to his music when you're in this town. Uh, Richard Linkletter, the people, yeah, just the people who you think of who are just, you know, uh, even though it's weird to think that way, but you're kind of proud that they are of your town for at least a portion of their creative life. Mm -hmm. They were living in Austin and like there was no compromising at least for that chunk of time. Um, But yeah, Austin's, there's tons of great creative stuff. It's probably even better now for creativity than it was back then. There's tons of people from all over the 
world that come for the university and for the jobs and stuff. So I don't know. I feel like there's just more, like if you want to do something creative, um, it's not too hard. If you've got the momentum don't, going, there's people in this town that can help you and there's cool people. Yeah, it's a creative yeah. place. I feel like, I mean, having grown up here, like I feel like Austin has definitely gotten better and more interesting overall like mm -hmm. as, a, as an arc i don't know do you do you feel that way i in, think in so experience? it's not the popular thing to say ever but there's i like this city as much or better than when i moved here you know i see um i certainly see a potential future that's not very fun you know what do you think we can do to to like fight that i don't know it I mean, I've got, I ponder it. I think, what if we just stopped it? We made serious laws and we started giving um, incentives, tax breaks to black families that have had their home in Austin for a certain number of years. You give them incentives to stay and just sort of stop the evacuation, the sort of forced evacuation northeast and ultimately out of town into other communities. So for these neighborhoods the minority neighborhoods there needs to be some some life breathed into them they need to start doing things for the kids in the town like the this golf course on the east side of my mlk in, in springdale um, nobody who lives in the neighborhood plays golf there they should if they're going to run a course there and take up all that beautiful land that could be a park then they should have to give i feel um golf lessons like to the kids that live in in the zip codes around there should if they want to if somebody can get them down there they can come down and like learn a sport for one night a week there needs to be just stuff like that needs to happen you need to start giving the young a leg up helping out the, the old a little bit uh the sick and then just generally beefing up support for forgotten parts of the community and not so aggressively letting these um commercial interests force them out of town you know, because who knows how interesting this m the music capital will be, will be without the black people that sort of inspired it all. You know, all the hippies that started this were just emulating their idols, which were these black people. So it's like once you get rid of them and you get rid of the hippies, it's what's really left is like a caricature of what you think you want, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was that. I don't even remember that question, how that one started. I guess um, we'll just... To, to sum it up, like looking forward, what do you think we can do to kind of keep Austin, Austin? I uh, just, I would say interact and do that as much as possible. Try not to stay in and watch Netflix all the time. Try to, um, if you have a creative community, try to foster it. And if the young or the people of your community that need help, try to give them forums for creativity and, uh, Try to do things yourself and generate revenue with your own creativity if you can to spark new directions in your life or try to, and also to be an inspiration to the people around you, especially the young people or the people who are having a hard time. That's about it. It sounds pretty simple, but I think if people in Austin did that, if, if we weren't so busy trying to make this insane rent that a lot of us pay, I think yeah. we would, you know, I think that's what we probably want. And actually, one thing I meant to ask you um, about or to get out of you is like, um, I don't know, like a, kind of a story, an Austin story, like a quintessential, like Austin experience that you had that um, I guess that, you know, made a difference in your life or that, you know, affected you or was mm. just interesting or of note. Well, I've had plenty of, of interesting just run-ins because we have the music festival here. So I saw when I was young, I saw, um, or like early 20s, I saw Tom Waits in the lobby at the Driscoll hammered, like talking to this uh, young black dude who was, uh, I guess, a reporter. And uh, me and my roommate at the time like shook his hand and it was just so bizarre. <laughs> There's plenty of things like that just because like – there's a draw for people to come here, creative types. Mm -hmm. So I have a, 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 a friend of mine from Houston. She like came up here to uh, see a concert and some of our other friends from Houston came too. And she ended up hooking up with the drummer from the blues explosion outside of like Liberty lunch. We like watched our friend walk off into the sunset with to what us at the time was like a big rock star. And we were like, no way. That's so awesome. So 
I've had uh, fun times, and depending on what age you are, there can be varying levels of amazing. Like at that age, seeing Tom Waits in person freaked me out. Like I lost <laughs> my mind. I like I seriously had like a panic attack. I was such a huge fan of his at that time. And uh, but just as far as meaningful stuff, just all the any volunteer work I've done here is. Um, I feel like advanced me as far as refining my personality and downplaying my ego and just generally having a better time in life. There's tons of good volunteer organizations here. Uh, They're pretty well networked. So if you're ever feeling down, I would you know certainly recommend people just to, to go um, go talk to a social worker, get get some volunteer work. You'll meet some cool people. Um, those those probably those experiences in their way over time have been the most meaningful to me Um, because it just like forces me out of my comfort zone and helps me see other parts of the community that I would never see otherwise you know Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah I don't know I don't have one great like Luke Skywalker moment in Austin (laughs) what entertainment community we have seems to be nice and humble at least humble enough you get a, you get human real human connections with much people. more. The Austin Music Awards is you know it's it's awesome and that people will get up and dance. Um, you know people aren't like caked in makeup. They're like they they're wearing jeans. They're very normal and they love seeing like Lyle Lovett or the the Crickets from like Buddy Holly's old band play and just they will get up out of those chairs in a heartbeat and just dance and uh, yeah just it's got a better vibe. Not you know. It's it's a little silly to think of it as the live music capital of the world, but musicians here are very cool. It's a, yeah, that's like like Howard Stern, king of all media, or whatever. It's just a ridiculous <laughs> statement. You, like you should never really say that. But it was good marketing. Though. It was. It worked out. <laughs> the bottom line for for several people has worked out. Thank you.